Hello and welcome back to TCG Dreamland. We're opening a Commander Masters set box today. This is going to be my third one on the channel. So, the first box I opened like at release and we made a huge profit on that box because these boxes have, how many boosters? There's like 24? How many are there? Uh, I don't see it on there. I think it's 24 boosters. Or is it 18? It's either 18 or 24. Well, let's see. I'll just count them out. Just count one of the stacks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 times 3 is 24. Yeah. All right. So the idea with these is that Every pack has like multiple rares in it, and because it's a reprint set, there's tons of expensive rares. So, because there's 24 packs, these are actually a better value on average because, you know, collector boxes are super high risk, high reward. So, on average, you're actually going to get better value out of a set box. Our first box we opened had a huge amount of profit. The second box, which I opened probably a couple months ago, which was a couple months after the initial release, uh, that box, we also made money. So now I'm like, well, it's been another couple months. Let's see if we can still make money. So that's what we're going with. Wow. Starting off with a borderless foil soul ring. That's probably like a great card. Oh, and a commandeer. Okay. Starting off strong. All right, so the good stuff at the front of the packs, it looks like. I will go through that stuff. The commons and uncommons, but the good stuff is going to be right at the front of the pack. Ooh, signed Urza art card. That's cool. I like, I actually keep a lot, well, not a lot. I keep all of the signed art cards because... They're cool. Armorcraft Judge. We've got Champion's Helm. Very nice rare there. So that was a rare, right? I'll keep the rares over here. Teferi isn't bad. All right, go through these a little faster. Just to see another Borderless Soul Ring. Not bad. So prices should be popping up on screen. I have to say that in the video or else I'll get lazy and not do it. But if I say it in the video, then I'll actually do it. I'll actually edit the video. So prices coming up on screen. All right, I'm only going to do the cha-ching sound for expensive cards, though, because I was doing um, the uh, Doctor Who boxes. And, ooh, nice, a pearl medallion. Very nice. And Balin, I don't think that one's amazing. It's definitely not over $10. Tooth and Nail, wow, triple rare pack. Pretty cool. Meteoric Mace. Thorn of the Black Rose. Commander's Sphere and Frantic Search. There was a bunch of borderless cards in that pack. That was way more than normal. Um, yeah, I was doing Commander, or the... Uh, Doctor Who boxes, and it's like, when that set first came out, like, almost every card in the set, because supply was so low, it was like almost every card in the set was over a dollar, and so every single card was getting a cha-ching, and people were like, um, no thanks? So, Grizzly Transformation from the list. All right, Heroic Intervention, very nice, and Foil, great rare. Foil rare, yeah, that's a good card. All right, Grave Pact, very nice. Angelic Field Marshal, Maelstrom Wanderer. Tragic Slip, Frantic Search. The Night Blade. All right, yeah, we're getting good value already. I think these boxes, they've been fluctuating between 260 and 280. So, oh, another Dominaria. Cool. Mishra's Self Replicator. Interesting. Right, Heart Piercer Bow. We've got Tooth and Nail for the first rare. Inspiring Statuary. Interesting, that's a rare. 
Oh, Urza, Lord High Artificer. Was once great, is now like $5. But, uh, yeah. Not sure when this is releasing in relation to the Modern Horizons 2 box that I either am opening or have opened. But uh, I'll be talking about that in my Modern Horizons 2 opening. Or I did already. Not sure when these are coming out in relation to each other. But yeah, this box has been strong so far. The Mythics could be better, but we've been getting some fantastic rares. Crash of Rhino Beetles. Boom Pile. And Wrath of God. Followed by Dracuseth. Alright, so that pack could have been better, but not every pack is going to be a huge money pool. What's that? Reality Shift. Cool. Alright, so what do I want to talk about? Let's talk about reprint equity and booster box prices. Let's talk about booster box prices first. I talked about it a little bit, but it was like these boxes. So the way Wizards has been doing it recently is that, oh, nice. Deflecting SWAT. Very nice rare. One of the best cards in the set. Very nice. I'm going to put that up there aside from the other rares because that's fantastic. Commandeer is also really good. Demon Lord Belzenlock. Interesting name. So another Soul Ring. Keep that on screen for a sec just in case that's over a dollar. Dread Return. So the way Wizards has been doing it, because they've been pricing every every like special set that isn't a standard set, they've been pricing them all different. And the way that they're doing it is basically they know what cards they're putting in the set, and so they kind of estimate what they think the EV is going to be, and then they charge based upon that. And so these set boxes, the Commander Masters set boxes, were priced initially to be retail value of like $360 plus. And the thing is that while it does have extra planar lens, very cool, while it does have a ton of value, which may even, you know, allow for maybe like a $300 price tag, people just are not willing to pay that. That's the simple fact, because people that are trying to flip cards need the EV on average to be significantly higher than their cost of acquisition and people that are just opening packs either for fun or to get cards to play with they just don't want to pay those kinds of prices path of ancestry so wizards needs to come up with something they either need to have a little bit less value in these masters sets or they just need to except that they're going to make less money and charge less for their boxes. Leap from the list. Cabal Patriarch. Sapphire Medallion. Nice. Second medallion of the box. Very nice rare. All right, we've also got Zepalta Primal Dawn. That's cool. That is humongous. All right, Tetsuo. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about box prices. They're trying to eke out as much money as they can, and so they're charging more for these sets. They're putting more value in these sets, but then they're also charging more, but people just aren't willing to pay that much money, even if they get the value out of the box. They're just not willing to pay that much money. That's a dread return, I think. So that's what I have to say about prices and stuff. Now let's talk about reprint equity. We've been seeing Wizards has been laying a lot more into universes beyond. Scythe Claw, first rare. Obscuring Haze, second rare. 
All right, Queen Marchesa, triple rare pack. All right, so we've been seeing Wizards laying a lot more into the universes beyond, which is good and bad because they are able to make more mechanically unique cards, I guess. And they're also able to reprint tons of commander cards that are like staples. And I don't know. So the thing is, my whole point was that they're laying more into universes beyond, which is going to decrease the amount of reprints. But the other thing is that they're still... So with standard sets, we've been seeing a lot more lately than in the past that they've been putting subsets in with standard sets. Avatar of Slaughter, Jet Medallion, very nice. All right, we're getting... That's our third medallion of the box. We're getting a lot of really good rares. This is a pretty good box so far. And we're still low on Mythics. Hopefully we can get some good Mythics in here. Heartless Hidetsugu. Um, so it's like... They're doing more sets, but they're doing more... Universes Beyond sets, which slightly decreases the amount of reprints. But then they're also doing subsets in the standard sets, which have reprints in them. So my whole thing is there's going to be tons and tons of reprints. So so just right off the bat, I want to say I'm not collecting modern singles anymore. I'm just not, except for maybe neon ink and like serialized cards like those could be OK. Those could be safe. That's not guaranteed. Uh, Nixilis of the Black Oath. Cool. So even I'd say even those are not a guaranteed, you know, good investment. But it's better than everything else, essentially. So, yeah, but they're not going to run out of cards to reprint. Magic the Gathering has so many players and so many cards that they've come out with that they're going to have years and years of cards to reprint before everything is finally run into the ground. You know what I mean? So there's still going to be Master Sets, Pure Steel Paladin, Inferno Titan, Talrand. There's still going to be Master Sets every year for the foreseeable future, because it's going to be quite some time before they actually run everything into the ground. And considering the fact that these Commander Masters set boxes, you're getting $300 plus worth of cards out of these, obviously there's going to be lots of cards to reprint, and there's going to be lots of value to come, especially if, like I said before, they need to price these boxes lower and that could be one way that they could do that is to just not put as much value in the sets. And so if they've destroyed the value of every card, then by necessity, then by, you know, by default. Ooh, nice. Avacyn, Angel of Hope. That's a really good one. Then uh, by default, these boxes will have to have less value because they've driven everything into the ground. So... <laughs> So, Extra Planar Lens. Oh, that's a Mythic. I don't think... Oh, I did put the other one up there. Okay, Extra Planar Lens is not one of the Mythics you want. Yargle. All right. Going through the other stuff. Exclude. Counterspell. So, yeah. The What I have to say about reprint and reprint equity is that they have plenty of cards to reprint. There's not going to be a reduction in master's sets and reprint sets anytime soon. They're going to be shoving reprints into every standard set, it seems. And that's just how it's going to be. Awakening Sun's Avatar. So it's going to be like that for quite some time. And all I have to say really is just don't invest in singles. That's really all I have to say about that. 
Mystic Confluence. The Ur Dragon, nice. Now we're getting some good mythics as well. Where can I put that? We're running out of space. You know what? Urza is like $5. That can go down here with the extra planar lens. All right, Assault Suit, Lightning Greaves, nice. Put that on screen for a sec so I can put the price up. Brass Knuckles, Dark Steel Ingot, Woolshock Battle Gear, Reliquary Tower. Not sure how those have, hold up, have held up. So let me know what you guys have think. I put a lot of my thoughts into this video. There's probably only 10 people watching at this point, but let me know what you guys think. You think my ideas have credibility? Do you think I'm full of it and everyone should be buying magic singles? Capture of Jing Xiao. Jing Xiao, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. All right, Blood Spore Thrinax. Zakama, Primal Calamity, Three-Headed T-Rex, that's cool. All right, Tatiova. See if there's anything that I recognize. Not really. All right, so we are on the last eight packs. Got some great value in this box. Gotten some great cards out of this box. Renowned Weaponsmith. All right, Fairy Artisans. Grand Abolisher. Can't remember. I think that one might have gone down in price significantly. It was good for a while, though. Braids, the one that's not super creepy looking. Victimize, Gourmand. Unstable Obelisk. Flawless Maneuver. That one's not bad, if I'm remembering correctly. Grenzo. That was just a two rare pack. Ooh, Arcane Signet. Do you like this artwork for Arcane Signet, or do you like the one that was in Baldur's Gate? I kind of like the one that was in Baldur's Gate more. Prismatic Lens. Prophetic Prism. Return to Dust. What we got? Oh, Tatiova. Borderless Foil. All right, Song of the Dryads, Decree of Pain, interesting, Ghoul Collar Gisa, Thran Dynamo, Felwar Stone. All right, anything else good? Not really. Next pack. I said all the things I have to say, so now it's going to be... Real boring. Ooh, reduced to rubble. Nice. That is in the list slot, even. All right, Twilight Prophet. Cool. I don't recognize that card off the top of my head, so it's probably not over $10. Yannette. Right, Brian Lynn. Thought Vessel. Very nice. Staple. Abundant Harvest Sky Shroud claim. It's a great common. Foundry Inspector. Myriad Landscape, which they've reprinted at least four times this year. But that one's just a staple, so I don't mind as much if they reprint the staples, because it's not like you're going to make a ton of money off of cards that are a dollar, you know. It's the uh, $20 plus cards that I'm more concerned about. Fall from favor. We've got Arachnogenesis. Chainer, Dementia Masters. Not terrible. Danatha. Hamza. Should be a boar. All right.
right, fire mine vessel is cool looking. All right, three packs left. We've gotten how many? Three medallions, a deflecting swallow. We've gotten some good stuff in this box. All right, oh, Ring of Three Wishes. Interesting. From Core 14, Core 2014 artifact. Interesting. I am not familiar with that card. All right. Evacuation. And Rafik of the Many. Just a double rare pack. All right. So coming down to the last Commander Sphere. The last two packs. Can we get... We have a lot of Mythics at this point. How many? Two, four, six, seven, eight. We have eight. Eight Mythics is probably pretty typical. So I'm not sure we're going to be getting a Jeweled Lotus in this box. Yasan in foil. All right, Stone Hoof Chieftain. Savine's Reclamation. That was a, it was a very, oh, Nahiri as well. That was a quadruple rare pack. That's cool. So, yeah, it was a very front-loaded box. We got... Tons of good stuff at the beginning, and then... Uh, ooh, Vandal Blast. Not bad. Tons of good stuff at the beginning, and then... The last few packs just had kind of mid-tier rares. It's an Omnath signed. Cool. So we got three signed art cards out of this box. Ooh, Arcane Signet in foil. Nice. I'll take it. Vault of Champions, a nice rare. Treasure Nabber. And, oh, nice! Good Mythic for the last pack. Soon Chuan, I think. Is it Soon? How do you how do you pronounce that? I know it's not how it looks. Because there's, like, different dialects in Chinese, and they kind of spell it how they say it in Chinese. But there's multiple dialects, so sometimes it doesn't sound at all how it's spelled. <laughs> so, Yeah. Ooh, Kemba. Full art. All right, so let's take a little recap. So stuff that I know is good. Let's do Mythics first, and then we'll do other stuff. Grave Pact. I think Grave Pact is good, but uh, there you go. Soon Shuan. Avacyn, very nice. Ur Dragons, pretty darn good. Grave Pact is not bad, I think. Think, if I'm remembering correctly. What else do we have? We have two of the land cycle, the rare land cycle, Undergrowth and Vault of Champions. And we have Deflecting Swat. This actually might be like the best card in the box, this Deflecting Swat. It's, uh, I think it's between $20 and $30. The price will have already popped up, so you guys know. What else do we have? We had three medallions. Very cool. And then we also had Heroic Intervention, Champion's Helm isn't bad, and Commandeer is actually pretty good. So, yeah, a lot of good rares, lots of good mythics in these boxes. So, there you have it. Price for the full box should have popped up on screen already. Did we make a profit? I don't know, because I won't know until I've actually edited the video. But these boxes are between 260 and 280 You can get them for usually. So, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more openings. I open every set that comes out for Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Digimon. So, I'll see you guys in the next video.